everyone and welcome to Nedit. Nedit is a sample mangler, audio editor, sound generator, general glitch machine for you to generate crazy rhythms, crazy textures, beat textures, sound design. You can jam with it, you can perform with it, but generally it's for sound generation for you to resample and use in your compositions. Great for experimental glitch, music concrete, electroacoustic madness, great for beats, great for vocals, glitching up vocals. You can do all kinds of things with it. It's got several concepts for sequencing and a couple for performing. I'll move from left to right across the panel here. So over here on the left, we have eight encoders, which are mapped ready for your MIDI controller or push. And they basically control some of the functions that exist within all these tabs. I'll go through those in a bit. Moving along to this section here, we've got some controls for the file once it's been loaded. So you drop a file in, I've already got one loaded, but I'll drop another one in here. You've got the start and stop button. And then down here, you've got a tab for how long the file is. So if it's one bar, you choose one, two bars, choose two, etc., etc. And you go up to 128 bars, which is good if you want to maybe put in an entire section of a song to glitch up or something. And then at the bottom, you have one. And if you choose one, that kind of is basically saying it's a one shot. You don't want to have a preset loop length. And then when you have that, you can independently choose the speed because once you choose a loop length, then the loop is repitched to whatever tempo Ableton is at. Very similar to Live's repitch time stretching algorithm. Then moving along, we've got some global parameters here. This min and max minimizes or maximizes all sliders across all the tabs, which is a quick way to just suddenly tell it to go nuts or suddenly tell it to do nothing. Then we've got a global control for the behavior of the sequencer for all sequences across all the tabs. Then moving on to this bit, we have the various tabs for how we can manipulate the audio once it's been loaded and playing. The first tab is slice. Here we choose how many slices we want, 16 slices, or 127 slices, or just two slices, whatever you want. Then underneath, we've got the clock rate for how often the sequencer moves between the various values in the multi-slider. And of course, we have a multi-slider here, which is kind of the fundamental control for how Nedit works. You also have a little slider here for soloing certain slices, which can also be controlled with this knob here. Moving along to the playback tab, we've got the various playback functions, forward, backward, pitch down, pitch up, and stretch. You can also click on them to solo which one you want. And again, you can control them from these knobs over here. And they also have their own clock for how often they change from one slider to the other. Then we've got the effects tab, where we have dry, flange, phase, filter, crush, shift, which is like a ring modulator, Rise, which will do a rise in volume, and fall, which will do a fall in volume. Again, you can click on them to solo them, and then you click and drag here with the multi-slider to determine how they work. And also, you can use the knob here to move around. Then in the loop section, this is the loop length for each slice once it's played. You can go from 16 bars right up to 0 0.125, which is stupid glitch. Again, you can click on a loop length to solo it, use the multi-slider to set some values, or move around with the knob like that. And there's also a clock for it. Then moving over here, we have a sequencer mode for each tab. You'll see that they're all color coded. Green for slice, red for playback, magenta for effects, and cyan for loops. I'll explain what the sequences do in a minute. Then we have the main probability. You could think of this as kind of like a dry wet, but rather than doing a blend of the signal, it's more a probability of how much Nedit will actually happen. So if you have it very low, nothing will happen and it'll just play the loop in its original instance. Whereas if you start to turn it up, 
you can choose how much chance that Nedit will actually happen. And then there's a clock at the end here, which is how often the probability, the main probability updates. So let's listen to it. Let's hit go and hit start. Let's see what it's doing. Oh my goodness. So right now the main probability is down. Nothing will happen. This loop is four bars long. I've set it to four. Let's go to the slice tab and let's choose some, let's choose 16 slices. So currently all sequences are running in probability, which means that the chance of something happening is predetermined by the probability set by a slider. I'm pretty sure that this slice here is a snare in this loop. So I've just basically given that a 100% chance that when Nedit is active, it'll play that part of the audio file. So if I turn up the main probability, we'll hear. Okay. So now I've given it a 100% chance that it is playing that part of the sample. If I introduce, say, this one over here, And you can see that we have a little bit of toing and froing. They both have a 100% chance probability. How often that happens is determined by the clock down here. So if I set this to one bar, they'll update every one bar. Or if I set it to 16, they'll do it more often. So it's great for getting some random variation to your drum breaks or to your musical material. And if Nedit is fully up full, and we have the clock set to, say, eighth notes here, we can use the knob here to slide around with your MIDI controller to certain parts of the audio file. The clock then acts as a quantizer for how often this updates. If we have it to 16. We can have it to one bar. So if I was to focus on this bit here and turn down the main probability, you can hear that every once in a while it's just going to play that part of the, of the file. Okay, let's move to the playbacks. So, let's turn the main probability up so we can hear what it's doing. And then let's go to the beginning of the file. So, currently forward is at the highest percentage. If I bring up backward a little bit, I've increased the percentage of the, the file will play backwards. And maybe pitch down, or pitch up, or stretch. click on stretch to solo that or down or backward and then I can move around with it and similarly the clock acts as a quantizer you can choose the clock rate or quantize here as well Okay, let's move on to the effects. It's exactly the same concept across all the tabs. Choose the probability with the multi-slider. Or whiz around with the knob. Same with the loop length as well. Let's try a stupid high loop length. There we go. Okay, cool. So let's have a look at some of the other sequencer modes. We've got prob, which is probability, grab, which will grab the last loop 
created by the amount of probability and then loop it. And popular, popular is an interesting one. Let's have a look at grab first. So I'll just leave it running for a bit. And uh, I'll set everything to play forward. I'll set all the effects to play dry. And I'll set all the loops to loop at four. Okay. So let's introduce some uh, slice probability and then hit grab and it'll loop. If we want to grab another loop, we just hit grab again. And that works for all tabs. They each have their own one, but I'm doing it globally. The one on the left is global. The one on the right is per tab, as you can see by the colors. So let's look at the popular sequencer. The popular sequencer works by, it plays in sequence sliders depending on their value. So numerically goes from the highest value to the lowest value. So let's set this to pop, turn them all down. Let's choose that one. Let's turn the probability up full, the main probability up full. Now, this slice here is full. That's going to play first. If I introduce this one, it's going to go to that one. If I introduce this one, it's going to play that one next. Uh, what about this one? This one is going to be slightly different. So it's going to that one, to that one, to that one, to that one. This is maybe quite noticeable with the loops. We go to loops here. There we go. We've got a little glitchy rhythm there. So we could have different sequencer modes per tab. So I'll set the, uh, I'll put the loop length back to popular. I'll set the effects to probability. I'll set the uh, playback effects to grab. So yeah, it's very easy to quickly get complete mayhem. Extreme chaos. But it doesn't have to be extreme chaos because you can have it playing and then you can just dial in as much of the chaos as you want. We could maybe focus on just... We could focus on certain parts and just tell it to only do that. If you're not really into click and drag mouse play and you want to take it on stage, you can just use the knobs. Use the knobs over here. Everything's all mapped out ready for your controller. And everything's fully automatable as well. So there you go. That's Nedit. Enjoy.